I am the most powerful words in existence. Stop what you're doing for a minute and actually listen to this question. What version of I am do you whisper to yourself when nobody else is around? Do you think yourself worthy, capable, or able to achieve that in life which you desire and deserve to experience? Watch this video to find out the true meaning to I am and how to actually connect to the cosmic consciousness of I am as opposed to the individual aspect of egoic I am. I am sat in town at the moment recording this video and I've come here specifically to bring to your awareness different versions of I am. Everybody has a story they tell themselves, a character which they have been cast and then continue to actually act out in this beautiful experience, this beautiful game or play that we call life. The egoic I, the personal version of I, will include all manner of aspects of physical structure and awareness, capabilities, successes, achievements and positions in life. I am Kane Stromberg. I am a father. I am divorced. I am a personal empowerment coach. I am a content creator, etc, etc. These versions of I am are limited to this physical body and this structure within a third dimension of reality. To step outside of what we believe to be true through our physical senses, we can then go about connecting back to the cosmic consciousness of I am. The truth being that I am you, as you are me. We are all that was or ever shall be. Universal energy dancing rhythmically, playfully and majestically in this beautiful experience, play, game, whatever you want to call it book that we call life and even scientifically they can't deny that this is right everything is energy vibrating at different frequencies and what you tell yourself is what you become if you believe yourself capable then at least you give yourself the opportunity to experience and achieve that which you desire if you believe yourself worthless a failure or unable to achieve or complete something that you are wanting to experience then you've already failed before you've even got to that point but in truth, failure is positive. And allow me to explain the reason why. Failure is falling around in learnings until realizing everything. You're constantly failing. Here at Earth School, we are failing until the end. We will never know it all. And by being able to actually separate our personal perception or attachment to any situation or event, we can look at it through alternate lenses of perception. If I believe somebody to be negative, then I look for that negativity and then that is what I see. As I see what I look for and I find what I look for and I see what I expect to see, the subconscious mind is only able to process a certain amount of information. What you whisper to yourself, the voice in your head that tells you I am, is your foundational program that everything else is built from. Look at yourself like a computer. I am and then the programs installed upon the computer through your experiences in life dictate the version of the character that you play today, the version of the I am that you are in this moment of now. By installing new programs, which is what I do on a daily basis with clients, you can then experience new potentials. The subconscious mind can only process, I right, listen to this because this is really, really fascinating and interesting. We are bombarded by about 2 million bits of data every second. So imagine that I gave you 2 million grains of rice every second and out of those 2 million grains of rice, you can process around 130,000 of them. Still a very large number. You can still process a lot of information and this is not just what's taking place outside you, but it's also the internal dialogue and running of your operational system, your body the regulation of your heartbeat, your blood flow, etc, etc, the regrowth of your cells. When you are walking, you subconsciously walk. When you are breathing, you are subconsciously breathing. But we can become mindful of these and we can then actually affect the way that we walk, the way that we breathe, choosing it as opposed to having it happen unconsciously. So out of the 2 million bits of data, you can process 130,000 of them. 
So you grab 130,000 grains of those rice and that is what you then create your image and interpretation of the world through. If you are used to grabbing certain bits of rice because you are used to seeing certain things, used to people behaving in certain ways, used to yourself being only able to achieve or experience certain things because you have confined yourself to be the egoic I am, oh, I can't do any more than I am because it's the way that I was born. It's my boss's fault, it's my parents' fault, etc., etc. Any time that you place your ability to achieve outside yourself, you have created yourself the role of victim and you are playing that character accordingly. You are always creating. Whether you believe it or not, you are in charge of your life and everything that happens within it. I don't have control over where this person is walking, but I have control over the way that I respond and react to that happening. So if there's something which is negative in my egoic perception of it, by being able to accept it, I can then let go of it and return to a place of not caring, not minding. The expression, I don't mind. I don't mind. I'm sat here now. There's some noise in the background. There's a lady coming just sat next to me. I don't mind. I don't mind any of it because as soon as I mind, I've attached my conscious awareness to it and therefore I have then started to classify it as good or bad. By not minding it means that there is no good or bad. So we don't mind stressful situations in life, therefore those stressful situations don't become clogged and internally connected, becoming a form or state of dis-ease in the body. Because any time we are out of ease, we are in a state of dis-ease which leads to dis-ease. So those 130,000 bits of data you grab what you're expecting and used to seeing because the subconscious mind is programmed to take the path of least resistance. It is, it is there to protect and serve the body and it does so with the most beneficial information and ways that it has at its disposal at any one time. If you are in the past, let's say you learn that being angry was a way of protecting yourself. I bring this to mind because it was my program of old. If somebody got angry with me, my response and defense system would be to get angry back. That kept me safe. One, two, three times, or all of three. Once it becomes concreted in place the third time, you go to it once, you go to it twice, you go to it thrice, and it works. Therefore, it becomes your program. Whether it is the most beneficial way or not is the way you have chosen. Think of it as a walk. You walk from your house to work or to the shops or wherever it is upon a journey. On that journey, you take the path that you are familiar with. It doesn't mean it is the most beneficial path. It doesn't mean it's the most enriching path. It doesn't mean it's the quickest one. It just means it's the one that you are familiar to and you feel comfortable and confident taking. This is why we go about continuously challenging and overcoming fear, as to remain in a bubble of fear limits us to experience everything and only within that bubble. You separate yourself outside and you continue to be able to expand your awareness, your consciousness, and experience things that you would otherwise not have been able to experience. I am continuously evolving. I am continuously challenging my view of perception and reality so that I can pass this information on to you. I am eternal, limitless, and able to achieve anything that I put my mind to. Therefore, I am. Somebody who believes himself limited, lacking, and unable to achieve that which they desire will be along that path, playing that character, and accordingly being in that placement and role. So, before I let you know how to actually go about recreating your version of I am or your understanding, your programs, I'd like to actually ask you to really think about who you view yourself to be. What version of I am do you tell yourself? Let's have a look at different I ams. I am a mother. I am shopping. I am looking for something, I am walking, I am delivering something. So does that person view themselves as a delivery driver or do they view themselves as a free and sovereign being? To view yourself as a mother is a very powerful program and I actually just stopped the video a moment ago because I saw a friend so Noelle, all my love.
and it was beautiful and amazing to see you. And as I was saying, the program of being a parent is one of the most powerful ones that we then adopt. And then we actually go about choosing things or reacting or behaving in a certain way because we view ourselves to be a parent. I would have done that before, but I can't now because I'm a parent. Oh, I can't because of this. I can't because of that. I can't because of my children. It is a beautiful, beautiful experience to be a parent. The most amazing, phenomenal and educational experience that there is. My children teach me more than anybody else. Yeah, it can also, if you allow it to, or run your programming accordingly, limit your ability to achieve or experience things outside of yourself. I would go about trying to achieve my goals, but I can't because I need to dedicate my time and energy towards my children. I would, but I can't because I'm a parent. So again, the I am. I am a white English male. I'm six foot four, I am a father, I am named Kane Stromberg, I live in Ipswich, etc, etc. These are all egoic I am's. Cosmic consciousness I am's is again that I am you, as you are me. We are all that was or ever shall be. Universal energy, dancing rhythmically, playfully and majestically in this beautiful game that we call life and even scientifically they cannot deny that this is right. So, to connect to the cosmic consciousness of I am is to know through meditation being the most interestingly accessible and beautiful way of connecting to it. When you meditate, you exit the mindfulness factor of things. You stop minding or caring or trying to control or dictate and you just experience the experience of what it is, an experience. It's like going about experiencing the weather for what it is. We can't control when it rains or when it's sunny, but we can control our reaction and our way of actually utilizing or enjoying that weather. When it rains, it is beautiful to go dance naked in the rain. The rain brings us the water that we need to grow the crops and sustain all life forms upon this beautiful planet. The rain brings with it a cleansing and purifying element. It allows us to get all snuggly and warm after going out for a walk in the rain when we go home and have a nice cup of hot chocolate or cocoa, wrap up warm with our loved ones. The sun is also required to be able to grow those crops. It warms the planet, it warms the skin, it warms the heart. It brings with it the opportunity to see that we could otherwise not be able to, to do and experience or everything that we are experiencing. It is a form of life itself and gives life to all beings unconditionally and equally. And that returns to the acceptance and understanding of everybody unconditionally and equally, being able to love everybody unconditionally and equally. And knowing that we are all one and the same, that we are different versions of the same self, that there is only one prime creator, one form of consciousness, and that we are all branches that stem from that consciousness. The ground and foundation is love. The trunk of existence is everything that is, was, or ever shall be. And then there are different branches, and you could relate this to different people within your household, the tree being your family, your house, and each person being a different branch, and then each of those branches having different leaves, each person having a different emotion or different point of view to any situation. So meditation is the way that we connect to the cosmic consciousness of I am. Meditation is the most beautiful and powerful gift in existence, and it is the first five episodes of this Christmas special. So this is episode number 10 of the Christmas special, the 12 days of Christmas. The first five episodes being on the mainstream meditation channel, being a step-by-step -step process of how to meditate, how to meditate, how to create space, and a few very beautiful guided meditations to bring you into a place of full acceptance of what is taking place now, to then be able to move forward from in the most understandably acceptant way. And then the next seven episodes are on the Cosmic Surfer YouTube channel, which you are watching this upon. So if you have not yet done so, please subscribe to both channels and make sure you watch every video in sequence from the start to the end. 
This is I Am. Tomorrow's episode is a very, very beautiful and powerful episode of the podcast where we discuss the gift of meditation, the gift that keeps on giving. Muz Murray, the, the one and only, the man, the legend, the guru, is going to explain and discuss and share his journey through life, through the experiences he has had so far, what meditation is and how, what he is actually using now to replace that as a daily practice. Tomorrow will be the podcast and the last day being an unconditional acceptance and love meditation, an unconditional loving meditation. So the Cosmic Surfer series is all about the gift of love or the, the gift that keeps on giving being meditation and the, the gift of love to return to love, to connect back to love, the truth and the foundation of it all, to be able to look at another person and go, I don't really, I really, don't really care. I don't care your perception, your point of view, your programs or your beliefs. The truth is that I love you unconditionally and eternally. I don't care if you believe that this is right or that is wrong. I love you. I don't care what you've done, what you've experienced, what you've achieved. I love you. Because the truth is, that we are all one in the same, that we all want, desire and deserve to experience that love. So going back to I am, there's a pigeon here. There was loads, but they've all, they've all gone. So does that pigeon believe itself to be a pigeon? Does it go, I am a pigeon? Or does it actually just go about experiencing the existence that it is experiencing because it can. Do you think that it defies itself as being a good pigeon or a bad pigeon? That it's a positive influence or a negative? That it has achieved great things in life or that it is a failure? Or is that just something that us humans go about experiencing? Do you think animals condemn themselves for the actions and experiences that they have been part of? Do you think that they believe themselves a failure or a blame for the way that other people have it treated or gone about reacting to them in certain situations. If somebody has wronged you in the past, if somebody has done something negative towards you, quite often people take it to be that they are deserving of it and that it is their fault. In truth, it is an experience and again it is what we do with those experiences. We can't control the past, we can't control other people or the way that they behave, but we can choose through mindful focus of attention and a step-by-step -step process which can take days, thousands of hours to reprogram the mind. But again, this is what I do in my sessions with clients and I can take you like that out of a limited belief or a negative emotion or program and set you free from connecting you back to the truth of who you are, the infinite being in all ways. A step-by-step -step journey. So again, look at it as a field. Your mind is a field. And in that field, there is a path of least resistance. It's the path you have taken. And you go for a walk, everybody takes the same path and you end up taking that same path. You end up conforming to society, conforming to what you believe to be true or reality. In truth, the whole path has the potential to be experienced, but you just have a path of least resistance that you naturally walk down. If you choose, when a thought comes in, to override it, and you stay dedicated with your desire to experience the reversal of that thought being more powerful than the desire to experience the thought, let's use a habit such as smoking. If you want to stop smoking, then you tell yourself, not that I want to stop smoking, because then you are focusing and vibrating at smoking again. You are aligning yourself vibrationally with the frequency of smoking because you are saying, I don't want to smoke. The word smoke will vibrate and resonant with that and you will attract from the universe around you everything to show you a desire to smoke. Such as the woman who's just lit a cigarette. <laughs> um, instead, you say, today I will breathe only clean, fresh air. You remove the word smoking, you remove the vibration of smoking and you reconnect back to clean, fresh air. That allows you to then experience throughout the day a desire to only breathe clean, fresh air. If you then have a thought of smoking, it's up to you whether you go down that path. It is the path that you are used to and familiar with and it is the path that you will most likely take unless you stay mindful and override that program. Again, after about a thousand hours of repetition through walking the new path, 
the new path that you have trodden across that field will become the path of least resistance. It will become the path that is most familiar. The old path will overgrow. The truth is, the old path is still there. You could go back and take it whenever you wanted. If you really wanted to smoke again, you could. That is a choice. The same way as taking the new path is a choice. Again, we can do this work in a matter of hours as opposed to thousands of hours. It is up to you what version of life that you experience. It is up to you what character that you play. And again, the character of lack and limitation will never be able to walk a path of abundance because you will vibrate at lack and limitation and then you will walk and experience life accordingly. Again, it is not your fault what you've experienced in the past. It is due to the programs and the information and the beliefs that you had installed upon you through the events that you were part of. But now you have this information, it is your responsibility to do something about it. To choose to walk a new path, a new direction, one which is more beneficial to not only yourself but to everybody else. Everything you do in life is a choice. To give your power away to somebody else is a choice. To conform to a rule or regulation that you don't agree with is a choice. To go about limiting yourself to what you perceive as the benefit of somebody else is a choice. Only by putting yourself first can you then go about putting other people in that position. Look at it as a pyramid or a, a cup. If you fill up your cup and overflow to everybody else, then you benefit yourself and everybody else. If you give from your cup, giving your energy without being able to receive it in exchange, then you will get to a point when you are drained and unable to give to anybody else, therefore not being able to be beneficial to anybody else and also experiencing negativity yourself. Overflow, never give from the cup, always give from the well. Overflow, breathing that beautiful pranic life force energy in and out. I breathe energy, I breathe love in, and I breathe it out. That is why I can walk in a room and I lighten it up. That is why I can express love to people that I do not know. I can walk up to somebody and say, I love you, simply because I know that that truth within us all is there, that we all desire and deserve to be loved. It is just a degree of separation that some people have more than others. Layers of separation, layers of illusion, layers of, of fog, likened to what we classify as the matrix. To escape and break free from the matrix world separates us from, or reconnects us back to the truth of who we are. It separates us from that limited view of perception and allows us to see everything in existence, just as the way that Neo did in the matrix. There's energy vibrating at different frequencies, every interaction being an exchange of energy. I am the most powerful words in existence. Please, Create yourself an I am journal. I am an unlimited being. So this is mine. I'm a universal being with unlimited power and knowledge at my disposal. The universe is abundant and I am the universe. By expanding and guiding my all-knowing subconscious mind, I can and will achieve anything I put my mind to. I am on a journey of discovery, a journey of awareness and awakening a journey towards becoming my truest and greatest self. Life is a gift of which I am truly grateful. Love, light and infinite blessings. I am. Create yourself your own I am. Write down your I am in a positive construct and actually read it to yourself every morning and every night. Allow yourself to have that focus of attention. I am successful. I am joyful. I am abundant. I am healthy. If you want to rid something, if you have a, a disease in the body from going into that state of disease and you hate the disease, you are focusing negative energy on the disease, you are denying it and what you deny will persist. Imagine it as a river. If you block the flow of water through the river, then it will become stagnant and not be able to wash away those pollutants. Love your disease and you will dissolve it with that love likened to dissolving a piece of ice back into water by shining the light of attention upon it. The light that is within you, the light that is brighter than even a thousand suns, is love. Love is always the answer. No matter what the question is, love is the answer. I guarantee you of this. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for who you are and everything you do. Thank you for continuing to support the channel. 
for watching this series, this very, very special one-off series, the Christmas special, the 12 days of Christmas, taking us into a new year, into a new moment of now, and into the new ability to celebrate each and every moment that is. 2021 is the start, it is year one, it is the start of a new awareness of level of consciousness. The new world is starting now and you are laying the foundations to it. What you choose, you will experience. Choose to look for positivity in every situation. Choose to give people the benefit of the doubt. Choose to hold space. Choose to be positive and you will experience life accordingly. If you mindlessly choose to run those old programs of negativity, repression, being in a place of lack, being a victim, then that is what you will continue to experience. It's up to you, my friend, my brother, my sister. I see you. I am with you. Now and forever, we are in this together. United we stand and together, together we rise. Love, light and infinite blessings. Namaste.